Hi and welcome to our today video which is about OpenStack and OpenStack networking. So today we will be looking at uh, OpenStack, the, the open source cloud platform that can help us to build uh, public or private clouds. And we will be reviewing that how the virtual machine or instances inside OpenStack, how they can communicate with each other and how they will be communicating with outside work. We will be looking at the the neutron, uh, the neutron, how the neutron works inside the compute host, and also how the neutron works uh, on the neutron gateway to provide external connectivity to the uh, to the instances or virtual machines. And also, we will be reviewing the the overlay networking within the OpenStack host for providing the internal connectivity between the virtual machine or the instances. So let's start. All right, so to start with, let's have a look at the uh, OpenStack website, openstack.org. And here we can just go over the software. And if you click on the, the software uh, components, uh, here we can see the uh, the different uh, components of the OpenStack. So OpenStack you know, consists of multiple different open source projects, which are all combined together to deliver the cloud function uh, for, for to be used as a, for, for a public or private clouds. So there are, you know, it has uh, one of the major uh, components is the compute, which we have, you know, the Nova computes, you know, Kling, Zoom, uh, we have uh, you know, services for bay metal, the storage, the Swift object storage, Cinder, the block storage, and networking. This is the famous uh, Neutron, which is providing the networking for the OpenStack. We got Octavia, which is a load balancer, a uh, software load balancer for uh, for OpenStack, and you know the other services which are mentioned. You know, now, since OpenStack contains multiple different software components, uh, it requires a deployment tool to deploy and install the OpenStack on multiple different hosts or virtual machine or containers. So normally installing the OpenStack, you know, if you want to do a manual installation of OpenStack, it may take a very long time, you know, following a very complex installation documents to you know, to create, you know, the storage and, you know, the networking or the compute, you know, it may take a very long time. So there are multiple different deployment tools available from, from OpenStack and also from the other companies who are working with, with OpenStack, you know, do, doing, uh, uh, doing products within the OpenStack. Uh, so these are the tools which are provided by uh, OpenStack. They are sponsored here. So the first one is the triple O. So triple O is a uh, uh, is a project which uses OpenStack, a, a lightweight OpenStack. Normally, it's called Undercloud to deploy a major, uh, the, the real production uh, OpenStack, which is called Overcloud. So this is one of the uh, the methods. It used is based on the Ansible. Uh, there are other methods like you know it has also different uh, Ansible playbooks for deploying OpenStack, and uh, we have also these OpenStack charms. Uh, the deployment method which I have used for building this uh, OpenStack platform for the demo is based on the OpenStack charms or Juju charm, which is uh, listed here. Uh, when you try to deploy OpenStack with, you know, most of these methods uh, listed here, you may face problems, you know, face failures, problems, and fixing those failures and problems sometimes is not uh, easy, you need to find a method which is more compatible with your hardware or your, your environment. So uh, I found actually Juju Charms uh, something compatible with my environment. So uh, the platform which we have uh, is based on physical servers. We have four physical servers in our OpenStack uh, uh, platform right now. And uh, the, the others, you know, you can also do you know, um, uh, physical servers with others. Also, you can deploy it on the virtual machine, single virtual machine or multiple virtual machines. Uh, but in general, uh, you may face that, you know, uh, the virtual machines are going very slow and you may not get that performance uh, from the OpenStack, uh, which you are, you, know, you are desiring to provide that, uh, that performance. So if you go on the Juju Charms, uh, this one actually provides some uh, basic information and 
if we click here open stack in juju charm so this is uh the canonical juju charms uh which is a method for uh deployment this uh all, all the components of the of the open stack um it includes all of these components and if we just go to the open stack charms here and from here what what i have done i have I've used the OpenStack base and I have downloaded this file and followed these instructions here. So this deployment which I have is based on, uh, it uses the mass, uh, the metal as a service. So it automatically provisions my physical servers and it automatically installs also the, the OpenStack. So it includes all of these components. And when you install the OpenStack, it also creates the relationship between, between the components um so let's have a look at what we have built so let me just zoom this out a little bit okay so this is our uh the the diagram uh for for today demo so we have uh four physical servers right now in our OpenStack, and these four physical servers three of them here they are all nova compute nodes and this one is a neutron gateway so this node will be acting as the gateway node for providing external networking to our OpenStack uh, components and to this virtual machine which we are going to build so we have all of our hosts here they are all connected to a management network the management LAN, and this network is based on these ip addresses which we have listed here so all of them are in uh, 192.168.251.0/24 that's a network for uh, for the management uh, we have these three these three green ones are virtual machines so i have a juju console uh, this ip address i have a juju controller and we have a mass server so the mass server actually does uh, the provisioning the uh, the hardware the hardware servers so it installs the base os it work it uses the uh, the ipmi or the bmc for turning on and turning off the server or uh, booting them and so only the here actually we have only the neutron gateway with another interface another physical interface is connected to external network so this this external network has a different ip range so it has 192.152.0/24 uh, and it is connected to the internet uh, these servers which we have they are all uh, hp uh, proliant dl380 uh, generation 5 so they are pretty old um, and when we start uh, with mass uh, it installs the latest ubuntu uh, 18.04 lts on all of these servers and you know that just works because normally these servers they are all uh, the raid controller for example doesn't have is not supported in the in the newer versions of the uh, of the linux distribution but you know ubuntu 6 uh, ubuntu 18.04 it includes all the drivers so it just uh, installs very very easily so here what we will go what we are going to do is uh, we get a little bit familiar with OpenStack setup which we have done and we will do a login to our uh, OpenStack Horizon the web interface we will see uh, how it looks uh, to start with we will we will not creating a separate tenant so we will use just a standard uh, admin tenant uh, just for for this demo and uh, we will creating a new external network then an, an internal network and finally we create a virtual router to connect the external network to the internal network so that router will be sitting between these two networks and we start with launching an instance and allocating a floating ip for our new instance so the new instance um, will be sitting in the overlay network inside this uh, internal network actually this internal network which i have listed here is this overlay network and it will be having a separate network with separate different ip address which is not exposed to any of these physical interfaces so this network actually it just leaves as an overlay network between all of these hosts uh, so when the virtual machine so this particular virtual machine if it is located on the server 7 and it the version machine number two if it is located on server number 11 to communicate the communication between these two virtual machine it goes over these two servers using a you know gre tunnel or vxlan tunnel so that's how it's called the overlay uh networking 
Um, so once we allocate the floating IP for these virtual machines, we will allow external connectivity to these virtual machines actually. So from external, we will be able to access through one of these IPs, which eventually gets destination NAT through the neutron gateway and it will reach to the, to the virtual machine. Uh, we will have a small little deep dive into the neutron gateway to understand how it really works, how it provides external access and internal access, you know, to the to our virtual machine, to our instances. And finally, uh, we will create check the networking between these two instances. So we, once we launch these two instances, we will check how they are communicating between each other. So or using those uh, tunnels, uh, which I said, like GRA tunnel or VXLAN tunnel, we'll review that, you know, how exactly it is going to happen. So OpenStack, mainly uh, the networking technologies, the, op uh, the open source networking technology, which we already studied. Uh, most of them are used like Linux bridges or open vSwitch, OVS. Uh, they are all using OpenStack and even there are uh, optional components like load balancer as a service or firewall as a service. For example, the, the load balancer as a service component of OpenStack, which we are, we are not going to see it here, but that component is just based on the HA proxy, which we already studied in this course, uh, which is an open source uh, load balancer. And also similarly, it has uh, components like firewall, uh, firewall as a service and you know, the other components. So let's start uh, jumping and looking at our OpenStack services and start by getting into our web interface of the, of the OpenStack. So I will start by accessing to this Juju console at uh, this IP address which we have, 192.168.251.3. So from here, I will be able to find uh, the IP address of the of the Horizon web interface. So you know Horizon, you know, and all the other components, they are all running inside these servers. And also in these servers are not only running a specific application, but they are also running few uh, controllers as a, as a container, as a LXC container. So let's access this, uh, the Juju uh, controller, the, the console. So let me SSH to this IP address and here we go. We are on the, uh, on the Juju. So if we issue this command, Juju status, Juju status will give us information about what is going on. So we have different application of the OpenStack, which are all showing active. That, that's great, actually. And we have the units. So this application, they are running on, they are running multiple units. And so, for example, we have multiple Ceph monitoring, Ceph OSDs, and, you know, the others like, you know, the Nova, uh, the, the Nova computes, Nova compute zero, Nova compute one, and Nova compute two. Uh, here it shows the machine. Uh, the first digit is the machine number. So here actually we have four servers. So it's starting from zero. So this one, Cephmon zero, it is running on server one, LXD zero. So the, f uh, the first uh, container which is running on the server number one or this one is running on the server number two as the first container uh, similarly there are other all the other OpenStack projects are listed here for example our keystone is running on the server number three as the uh, the container number one the second container uh, we got MySQL uh, Neutron Gateway is seated here. Is sitting here. So Neutron Gateway, which is an important one, which we need to do some work with, that is running on the server zero. That's a physical server. Um, and these are all the machines which are uh, within this setup. So in total, we have a four servers. So server zero, server one, server two, and server three. And each one also is running three containers. Uh, for running the whole OpenStack setup. Now to start with, we need to access to our OpenStack dashboard or the horizon. So OpenStack 
dashboard is actually is running on the server number three container number two but you know we don't care about that we just need to grab the ip address so 192.168.251.241 which is listening on port number 80 and 443 so let's get our browser let me close this and we just go here oops oh okay i put the wrong ip address sorry because I did not copy that IP address here. So the dashboard is this one and 251.241. And we have to specify slash horizon. And here we go, we got the OpenStack login page. So this is OpenStack Rocky, the latest version of the, of the OpenStack, which has been deployed here. Uh, now we need to enter the domain username and password now to get the username and password uh, you know the the easiest way is to uh, if you remember when we were doing the deployment of uh, you know this OpenStack base there's a file which we have to download so this file this zip file includes the the readmes that you know what uh, what you have to do you know this is all the you know that readme file actually is listed here how you can expand horizontally and how, how the installation in general has to work and uh, there are two other uh, three different files for the uh, OpenStack RC so you have to source the OpenStack RCs which are actually doing some uh, exports and setting some environment variables on the on the machine which will allow you to use the OpenStack um, a console for for talking to the OpenStack on on the on that machine. So on the Juju host, I will use that. I will source these one of I will source only this one, and I can find also the password for um for the admin user. So here, let me just uh, I have put it inside this folder, the Juju bundle, and as you can see, we have this open open RC here. So I will source OpenRC. Okay, so that is done. Now if I issue a set and just filter anything starting with OS or includes OS. Now these are the stuff which are added by by the uh, by the by sourcing the OpenRC. Uh, now I have the project domain name, admin domain. So this is the domain uh, which we have uh, project name, admin, the raging username is admin. And this is the password. So the clear text password is here. I've copied it already. Now we will go back here, sorry, to our login page. Okay, and let's try to log in. So the username we got was admin and the password is the one which we got. And we just click on sign in. Okay. All right. So now we are in our OpenStack. It gives us the dashboard. You know, we have zero instances. We don't have an instance running. Uh, the virtual CPUs, the memory, 50 gigabyte of memory we have uh, in total, which we can use. So it's just a fresh OpenStack. Here is the compute. Uh, let's go to the network, network topology. We should not have anything here. So there is no network, no routers. Uh, I think it's there. So let's start with uh, creating our external and internal networks. So let's go back to our drawing here. Uh, so we managed to log into OpenStack using the Horizon Web GUI. We got the password from uh, doing the sourcing of the OpenStack uh, OpenRC file. Uh, we will create an external network and we will create an internal network now. So the external network is be connected to the external and the internal network here. So let's go back to our uh networking let's go to the networks and let's start from here so we create a network uh, let's call this network as internal net internal network okay and this network requires a subnet so we create a subnet we call it internal subnet and let's say okay so we need we need a network address for our internal network 
let's see what we were thinking of so 10.5.5.0 slash 24 that's the address we are going to use for our internal network so 10.5.5.0 24 so you can use this hints also which is located here for getting information um, there is no uh, gateway IP here so we don't need to do anything for that and click we will be running we will keep the uh, the DHCP server enabled so this network actually will serve as a DHCP server for all of these new instances or virtual machines that we are creating and we need to create a pool so to create a pool we just need to say start IP comma the end IP so let's say from 10.5 5.100 up to 10.5.5.150 uh, we need to provide a DNS server so and what's the format the format is one entry per line so let's say 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8 and 4.2.2.4 uh, we don't need to have any host roads and let's create the network okay now our network the internal network is created already if you go to the topology here we can see our network uh, showing just like a line here um, okay now let's create an external network so we create another network and this network will be shared because we will be using it for uh, other tenants probably also in the future we call it external network external net next and uh, the subnet for this one is external again subnet i can only call it this 252 uh, the network address is 192.168.252.0 slash 24. Uh, here we have to also mention the default gateway. So this is an external network. So the default gateway actually on this network is 192.168.252.1, which is a router which we have here. So that router uh, will be the default gateway for our neutron gateway in order to route out towards the internet and to the uh, to the outside uh, so let's add that IP address also here 192.168.252.1 and we you are not going to run the HCP server here so okay so and uh, we just click on create and here now we have two networks created one internal network and one external network and if you go on the topology, we have the two networks sitting here. And these two networks, they don't have any connectivity between each other. So we have external network and internal network. And, you know, now to connect these two networks to each other, we need a router in between. We need a router. So we have to create a router to connect these two networks to each other. Uh, let's go on the routers. And here we will create a router. Uh, let's say a uh, router. We create a router. We click on set gateway because we want our router to do the natting. Oh, here actually it's not showing anything. I think we have made a small little mistake somewhere in our external network. So edit the external network. All right. Okay. So actually, we are in the project uh, level. We have to to make this network as external. We have to go in the, the admin and so let's try to do it from here. So admin network networks and our external network. Let's edit this. Uh, yeah. So we can enable the external network here. Okay. Now again at the the project level if we go back to the project level and we go on networks so we can see this one is external and uh, let's create a router here now we create oh we already created the router we click on set gateway and the gateway will be our external network 
and we enable the source netting. So this router will perform source netting over the external network. Now the router will have a single interface because we already selected that. So we have an interface and it already got some IP address also. So 192.168.252.4. So this is the IP address allocated for, uh, for our router interface. Uh, let's add another interface because the router requires another interface on the internal network. And we can add optional IP address also on the internal network, which we don't need that. Okay. All right. Now, as you can see, our external gateway status is active. This one is 10.5.5.1. It still is down, but it will come up uh, very soon if we just refresh that. Now, let's go to the network topology. In the network topology, let's see what do we have. Okay, now we got this router between these two networks and so which is connecting your internal network to the external network as you can see the router has got two interfaces and it shows all of this information it's a nice uh, good demonstration of what what we have created here so now we got the internal network we got the external network let's see what else do we need to do uh, we created the virtual router gateway to the external network okay now we have to launch an instance we will launch an instance and an instance will be created to our internal network to this one and let's have a look so we will go to compute instances and we will see we don't have an instance running and uh, we'll click on launch instance uh, before i launch instance you need to load images so here i have already loaded the image file it's a cloud image of ubuntu 18 uh, which is already loaded there so the image the instance which we are creating it will be based on you know this image you can load other images also sent to us or you know any other uh, application also you can load it here whatever it supports for example you can you can load the qualis uh, vulnerability scanner also as a virtual image here um so I can either just launch or I can go to the instances and launch. So I will use this one, the instances, and I click on launch instance. Um, let's call this VM1. And it is our virtual machine one. We are going to launch one of them only. Uh, let's say five gigabyte of disk space. And the image is going to be this one. This is the Ubuntu uh, 18. So I selected the image, five gigabytes, and this is our the, the, the source image file. Uh, flavor, we have already a flavor created uh, M1 small, which inclu uh, includes two gigabytes of memory, uh, five gigabytes of root. Uh, let's continue. And uh, the network that we are going to connect this virtual machine we can connect it also on the external network, uh, but we will choose the internal network. That's what we are planning to do. Uh, network port is not required. Security groups. So security groups by default, this is like a firewall uh, on the virtual machine. Um, I have modified the security group actually. It allows everything, but by default it doesn't uh, do much. So it's not uh, allowing stuff. Uh, so I have allowed uh, ICMP and the other protocols, also the TCP22, uh, TCP which is the SSH also is allowed inside this security group. Uh, key pair, this, this is the SSH key pair, which I have. And by default, when the instance launches, it comes with this SSH key. So we can just log into the machine without any username and password. Uh, we don't need to do anything else. We just click on launching the instance and here in the web interface, we will see that the image is being built. So uh, it goes to three, I three or four, I think different states, block device mapping and a few other states. Uh, so it already allocated the IP address for our virtual machine 10.5.5.105. So now we have the virtual machine has got the IP address and this IP address will be uh, allocated inside the machine. So let's for this, let's wait for it for to become active. 
Okay, so now as you can see, the status is active and the virtual machine is running. And it is having you know, this particular IP address. Now to access our virtual machine, we need to have another IP address here because we, we don't have, you don't have any route to these IPs, right? These IPs are all within the OpenStack and we are sitting somewhere here outside and we don't have any access here. So we need to do some uh, mapping. We have to access to this external network and from external network we do, we jump inside into our, this virtual machine number one. So this is called, uh, we allocate the floating IP here and this floating IP which is uh, inside this external LAN, that will get NATed destination NATed through the neutron gateway and it will be sent towards the virtual machine one. So here we are going to allocate a floating IP for our new instance. So we will go back here and we will go to the network and floating IPs. So here we can allocate IP address to the, to the project. So 192.162.52.6 is allocated and we associate this IP address to our VM1, virtual machine one. So we allocated a floating IP and we assign it to our new virtual machine. Okay. Okay. And now it is showing active. So our floating IP address is mapped to this IP and it is showing active. Now let's try to access our virtual machine through SSH. Okay, so now let's first try to ping the the floating IP, which is so I'm just trying to do it from the same Juju console. So 192.168.252.6, which I'm able to ping it. So this is actually the virtual machine replying to to the ping request, but the Norton gateway is is doing a NAT translation. And I should be able also to do an SSH as Ubuntu because Ubuntu is the default username, you know, set for uh, these machines. And I used my uh, keys. So now we got Ubuntu at sign VM1. So this is the VM1, uh, this virtual machine. And we are connecting from outside, coming to the external network using that floating IP address and neutron gateway is doing a NAT translation, doing a destination NAT. And we are entering to, from here, going over the overlay network from the server number nine, doing overlay, uh, I think using a GRE tunnel uh, to the server, which is running our virtual machine number one. Uh, okay. Now on the VM1, if I do, let's see. So we got uh, a network card, ENS2, one single interface. Uh, let's see what IP address we got. And uh, this is the IP address 10.5.5.11. That's the IP address of the machine. And from here, I should be able to access the outside also, which I do have. So I'm, I can access to the internet and the neutron gateway is doing the natting for us allowing this virtual machine to go out. Okay, uh, let's see where we have reached. Um, so we, alloc we allocated this floating IP for the instance. We check accessing the new instance using the floating IPs. Now let's have a look at the, the Neutron Gateway to see what exactly going on here. So this will give us some clarity that, you know, what, what exactly is happening? How are how we are able to access to the internet? Let's see where the VM1 is running. Uh, if we go to our instances in the compute instance, and we should be able to see the VM1. If we click on the VM1, it should give us some information. So VM1 is it's running on the host server number ten. Actually, it's sitting sitting on the server number ten. Uh, server number 10 is is this one, you know, with a different IP address. So we are coming here and we are going over the overlay. Actually, it's server 9. The Neutron Gateway is doing a GRE, GRE channel between, between server number 10 and server number 9. 
that's how the communication happens for the external access of these virtual machine so our vm1 actually sitting here and this is dynamic so every time you launch some instance on on openstack it just decides where where is the best place to load and run this virtual virtual machine so for for us for this time uh the vm1 was placed on the server number 10. okay so let's have a look at the server number nine the neutron gateway and see how the communication is happening okay so let's get out of this virtual machine now we are again back here so we are going to have a look at the server 9 which is 192.168.255.235 so let's SSH to 192.168.251.1 sorry dot 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 235 okay so we have to say Ubuntu because this machine was deployed using uh using mass and it has loaded the, the default user as Ubuntu okay so this is our neutron gateway uh, if I do system CTL trip OBS you will see we got a few OVS services which are running neutron OVS cleanup new OVS v switch D and the others and if I do Neutron, so we have Neutron L3 agents, Neutron Load Balancer as a service agent, Metadata, Metering, uh, Neutron OVS, and the others. They are all. Now, um, if I do an IP link, you will be surprised with number of interfaces which are all in this machine. So we have the Loopback Zero and ENMPS. ENP3 S0 and ENP5 S0. So these two are our physical interfaces. Uh, this one is the physical interface for the management network, and this one is the physical interface connected to that external network. So ENP S0 actually is this one. So I better ENP5 S0. And this one is ENP. So, so we have two physical interfaces and we got lots of bridge interface virtual interfaces and virtual eternals virtual patches you know all within this uh, let's see what do we see as IP address and we got a bunch of interfaces with uh, we gain uh, IP addresses also but if you mean if you look at here we don't see those ip addresses here right so the ip addresses for you know the virtual interfaces uh that overlay network which we created they are not they are not here so i have for example i have only 192.251.235 which is the ip address of the of the server but we don't have anything else so where they are hiding is we have to look at our Net, network net spaces now we have two net spaces here we have a dhcp and we have a q router so this is the one actually which neutron creates and places all of those creates actually that virtual router which we created inside neutron actually is created inside this new uh, network name space here and let's see what do we have here so if we do an ip net space exec on this one on the router paste and we say IP address and we have to do a sudo okay now we got very few number of inter interfaces and we have this one and we have 192.162.52.22 so this is the IP address actually on our external interface and this one is the IP address of our virtual machine, the floating IP. So each floating IP is being configured on, you know, this dynamic interface as a slash 32. And Neutron Gateway will do the netting, you know, from here to this network. So this other interface which we have actually is our internal network. So we have 10.5.5.1, this is a default gateway. This, this is the virtual 
um, router, the default gateway of that interface, the interface of the uh, overlay network. So all the virtual machine traffic will come as a default gateway here, and it, uh, this router will do a source netting to go outside. And for the return traffic, uh, sorry, the, if someone needs to communicate to the floating IP address here, again, the virtual router will do a netting between this IP and the IP address of the uh, specific virtual machine and allows it to, to reach there. Um, so if I do a ping to our virtual machine, let's see, what was the IP of our virtual machine? Uh, the VM1, here we go, is 10.5.5.11. If I do a ping to 10.5.5.11, it will not ping that IP because this is inside that overlay network and we are just on the standard default network namespace. So we will not be able to reach there. So to be able to reach that virtual machine only on this Neutron uh, gateway, we can say IP nets, uh, let me do this way, yeah. IP network namespace execute on this particular namespace which we know that this is the namespace that uh, the internal network is sitting there. Then we can say from this net space, try to ping to 10.5.5.11. And I have to do a sudo. Yeah. So now you can see we can ping that particular virtual machine. And this virtual machine is not here. It's not on the server nine. Actually, it is on the server number 10 but how they are communicating with each, other, with each other. So from server nine to server 10, so this communication is happening over a GRE tunnel. So if I do again IP link, you will see we got these GRE interfaces. Let me do, let me do a GRE of GRE. So you can see we have multiple GRE interfaces where uh, I think probably this one is being used for that communication because this is down, this is down, and this one is not down. So, so that's how this communication is happening. And uh, I should be able also to do SSH with from this command here. And you know, oh, okay, so from this machine, I don't have that key, so that's why I'm not able to reach to the server i cannot do the ssh but that's fine so this is how the, the ip addresses are configured here now if we do um oh yes vs ctl show again with sudo now we will see more interesting stuff here we go we got something called bridge external so we have a virtual switch on the OVS created here named BR-EX. And this one, it has a 5BREX. It's a virtual patch connected to something called in INT BR external. So this is a connectivity between the bridge external and bridge internal. So actually it's connecting here and we have the port ENP5S0. So ENP5S0 is our physical interface connecting to the external network. So this port is also within this bridge. So we have a virtual switch, which our external network is connected here. And also it has a patch cable connecting to the bridge internal. And bridge internal, it has all the other stuff like this connectivity to these tap interfaces, connecting to the uh this patch ton you know so um and also on top of this i think we should have some yeah we have some uh, linux bridges as well you know which is which are created by uh by the open stack uh this part actually there's a nice diagram inside uh open uh if you see here in uh, 
in a machine we got Linux bridges so the virtual machines they are all connected to uh, through, through a Linux bridge and these Linux bridges they are all connected again this with these virtual Ethernet pairs to a, to this bridge internal br-int so this is in the OVS and see it is red and it's this is inside the OVS and the bridge internal again is connected with this virtual patch interface to bridge external so and this is how the communication is happening so OpenStack actually uses both the Linux bridges and also OVS for you know for providing the network connectivity between uh, between the machines and it used may use the GRE tunnels or VXLAN tunnels for providing this network access between between the servers uh, if you see here these machines they don't have these IP addresses so when we are talking about the GRE or VXLAN so for example when a packet arrives at the neutron gateway and this packet needs to go for example to the VM1 which is in this network so server 9 doesn't know exactly where this VM1 is located so it will query inside OpenStack it will find out that where this VM1 is sitting so OpenStack will tell to the neutron gateway hey this VM1 actually is located on the server number 10 then VM then the the neutron gateway the server number nine it establishes a, a tunnel they're using GRE or VXLAN it sends all of these packets the main packets encapsulated inside another packet to the destination IP to the 192.168.251.236 so that's how the overlay network works and if this particular this particular virtual machine is sitting somewhere else again it will find the, the uh, IP address of the host that that virtual machine is sitting on and that traffic will go uh, encapsulated to that particular to particular house so that's how the uh, neutron gateway actually works so now let's try to launch another instance so we create the virtual machine 2 vm2 and we see how what ip address we get and where it is going to sit okay so back to our open stack and let's launch a new instance so we are going to launch new instance and we call this instance vm2 and uh, let's say five gigabyte of this this is the image use this flavor with two gigabyte of memory connected to the internal network and just a launch instance uh, let's give it a few seconds for for building and starting the VM now okay so now we got the virtual machine running and it got this IP is 10.5.5.4 and we haven't assigned any virtual uh, floating IP to this machine so we keep it isolated and we will see how we can jump to this machine from VM1 so we have access to the VM1 through this floating IP uh, let's try to do that and from there we will jump to the VM2 for doing that let's have a look at where these machines are running so VM1 we know it's running on server 10 the host is server 10 and VM2 let's see where it is running so this one is running on server number 7 so two different servers so this is where the vm2 is running on the server 7 and vm1 actually is running here on the server number 10 so now let's go and let's try to so i'm currently on the server 9 let me get out of here and from here i will just jump into our the floating ip of the uh, of the virtual machine one which was 252. okay now we are on the vm1 now if i do my ip address is 10.5.5.11 and i should be able to pin 10.5.5. what was that 5.4 that's a VM2 IP which I can so from VM1 we are just pinging VM2 
it is exactly like they are sitting on a layer two network, but actually they are in the they are in <laughs> they are on a layer three network. So from from VM one, which is sitting on the server ten, to the VM two, which is sitting on the, on the server number seven. And there is no layer two connectivity between these two for this particular network we are doing encapsulation so neutron is doing encapsulation for us between these two and ssh from here so if i do ssh to 10.5.5.4 uh, okay we don't have the the keys actually we don't have the keys loaded here but let's see how it is happening. So let's go into, let's have a look at the uh, server 10 on this IP. And let's check what is happening on the OVS and the network name, namespaces. Let's see what's going on. So let me exit from here and we do an SSH to as Ubuntu. So now we are sitting on the server number 10. Let me do a sudo dash s and obs obsctl show. Let's see, what do we have? So here we have got the bridge tunnel. This is uh, another, we have, we have bridge data and we have bridge internals. So different uh, virtual switches has been created using the OVS. And if I do, let's see, do we have multiple namespaces? No, we don't have any multiple namespaces. If I do an IP address, uh, it seems very complex. So let's do just grab profile net. So we see the IP addresses. So we have our management IP. So this, this is the management IP and uh, this one is for the uh, LXD bridge. So this is the network for the containers which are running inside this host. There are a few containers also running here. So the, the machine actually used this IP for doing encapsulations using GRE tunnels to the to the other server. That's how they work and using this um, the OVS. A similar setup also we have on the other on the server uh, server number seven. Let's let's have a look at the server number seven as well. Uh, server number seven, uh, its IP address is two three seven. IP address of two three seven. And uh, now we are on the server seven. And here also, if we do let's do a really dash yes, obvious. Yes, CTL show again. We have similar kind of setup. So we have bridge data, we have bridge internal, bridge external, and also we have the bridge ton. So this bridge is uh, used for doing the GRE. Oh, here we go. So we have a GRE port with the GRE type, and the local IP address is this, and the remote IP actually is the 236. So this particular port, this particular interface is like a virtual patch cable which is connecting 237 the server 7 to the server 10. so all of the communication between server 7 and 10 for all of those virtual machines is happening on this particular interface and we may have some more so like this one this is another gre tunnel as a virtual patch cable which is between the server 7 and 235, which is our server 9, which is our neutron gateway. So any traffic for from the VM2 going out to the internet, it will follow this particular interface. And as much as, you know, if you have more hosts within this network and you know, having virtual machines also on those hosts where this, where this particular, any virtual machine on this machine, this host needs to communicate to them. We will have more and more of these ports added to this uh, bridge ton virtual switch. Okay. So this was our, this is how we did actually the networking between the two instances. So this is how the traffic over this uh, overlay works, you know, using those uh, GRE tunnels within that bridge ton of the OVS. So this was our 
uh, networking demo with OpenStack uh, for today. So if you want to bring up your OpenStack, again, I suggest you get get few uh, physical servers, try to build your OpenStack on physical machines to give it some, some, some more power. And as you see, OpenStack, it beautifully uses all of these open source networking tools like OVS or uh, Linux bridges, creating these amazing GRE tunnels between these hosts or VXLANs. And you can do all of this testing with OpenStack. You can build your OpenStack in a virtual machine or, you know, using a uh, few uh, containers. Uh, there are multiple different methods for bringing on and uh, testing the OpenStack, or you can use uh, on a physical servers, you can build your OpenStack in this way. You can create multiple different tenants and the tenants will be isolated from each other, even if they are you know, located on the same host. So they will have different uh, separate uh, virtual bridges uh, in the OVS. So they will not be able to see each other traffic. Their traffic will be isolated. And you can do all of this testing uh, in your lab with, with OpenStack. Uh, so this was our demo with OpenStack networking. Uh, if you have any question, please either contact me directly or you can raise it in the in the forum. Thank you very much.